best boxing content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and punch that bell for notifications. Robert Wiggins is ready to square off against DeVarrell Williamson, 34 years of age, born in Washington, D.C., living in Denver, Colorado, 17 and one, with 16 knockouts on his resume. Coming off the win against Corey Sanders, he had a good win against Dale Crow as well. 12 straight knockout wins, Teddy's tips for touch of sleep. Well, if Williamson is gonna keep on that fast track, that winning track, land the right and say goodnight. It's Williamson's out punch. It's where all the power is, and against the southpaw, guess what? It can be the best punch to throw. Use your height by controlling distance and making Wiggins reach in with long shots, then catch him in between. And finally, make soup of that turtle defense. When Wiggins crosses his arms in front of him, a la Archie Moore and George Foreman, that old turtle defense, there'll be an opening underneath to the body. Drop the right hand no, man, downstairs. We the Mike we Ortega is our referee for our main event. At all Williams with both the height advantage of about five high, inches. Okay? I'll be watching low blows. Okay? Against Wiggins. Best of luck. Williamson had 137 amateur bouts. Wiggins had 10. Williamson has been at it a long time. Didn't necessarily expect to turn pro. After that long amateur career, his only loss stopped in the fourth round in his third pro fight to Willie Chapman. Williamson in the white and red, Wiggins in the solid black with the white strike. And if you're wondering about Williamson going against the southpaw, well, Teddy, when you have 137 amateur fights, you're used to seeing southpaws from around the world. So he's, Williamson told us it's not that big a deal. Right, and in the pros, he had to win over the southpaw. Dale Crow was in southpaw. And he knocked out Crow. So they do set Williams and feels good there. Yeah. 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 Williams can be a little awkward at times. He's got that big punch. Back up, back up. Little slip the right there. No knockdown. No knockdown, says Mike Ortega, the referee. Okay. Williams can be wide. He's a shorter man. He's a very game fighter. Very tough. They try to get in the conventional way, work his way in. But sometimes they get a little excited, he doesn't really work his way in. Those last couple of steps, he will reach with wide shots. And that's where he can have problems. Right there, when he starts reaching. It's a funny thing, one of two things can happen when he reaches. He reaches at the wrong time when Williamson is ready to punch. He can get nailed with that good right hand. Well, Williamson has a lot of power. But if he reaches at the right time, when well, Williamson is stepping back, and then as I said the tips, he can catch Williamson pulling back when he's not ready to punch. Wiggins, in his last 11 fights, only two of his opponents have a 500 or better record. Derek Bryant, who he lost to, stopped because of that swollen eye. And the win against Eric Kirkman. Talk about the right hand power of Williamson. But it's very important to have a partner for that power. Make sure that you use that left hand to set up that power as you step up the boxing ladder. And it's very important with the southpaw. Because one of the things you don't do when you're with the southpaw is you don't use your jab enough because it doesn't feel right. You feel like you're not going to land it, you're out of position. You're vulnerable, so you don't throw your jab. And that's the worst thing you can do with a southpaw. And that's the greatest thing a southpaw does against an orthodox fighter. It makes him give up his jab. Wiggins is trying to attack a little bit here. In the late stage of the mountain, I'll keep an eye on the CompuBox jab numbers. This is a scheduled 10 round heavyweight bout to Barrel Williamson and Robert Wiggins on Friday Night Fights. Pop Pop Papa Teddy Atlas back at the Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut. Live boxing action on Friday Night Fights. Devaro Williamson and Robert Wiggins underway. Round number.
number two, Williamson in the white and red, Wiggins in the black trunks. See the numbers from round one, edge to Williamson as far as the punch output. Eddie Williamson landed four of 31 jabs in that first round, according to Tommy Mike. Well, that's what you want to see, he's to toil the guys, and he's fighting the southpaw. And as we touched on, one thing that a southpaw can make you do is abandon your jab. If you're the orthodox fighter, which Williamson is, you don't want to abandon your jab. Even if it doesn't feel as comfortable with a southpaw, even if it doesn't land as often or as clearly, still use it. It's still doing something. It's still having an effect. It's keeping Wiggins from just walking in. Wiggins wants to make it a rough fight. He stays to the outside and lets Williamson control the pace. You know, what both fighters want to do, what makes this fight, to me, interesting, both fighters want to do specific things, and they're both very contrasting. Williamson wants to be on the outside, use that jab and spot up that right hand, which is a good punch a lot of trainers like to use with the southpaw, and that's where Williamson's big power is, in that right hand. Williams wants to get in close and wants to force Williamson back and see if he can catch Williamson like that, backing up. If Williams is going to be effective and have a good night tonight, it's going to be as Williamson pulls back. We saw that turtle and you, Williamson, that turtle defense, and sometimes he'd get inside and he'd force those arms. He started to do it just a minute ago. See, when he does that, I think Williamson should settle down. Step, step. And punch. Because when Williams pushes those arms, he can't punch unless he pulls them back across his body. It gives you a moment to get off. on the outside, trying to catch something on the outside, but what he's forgetting about is while he's doing that, he's pulling back. And while he's pulling back, he's giving Wiggins an opportunity to now. Straight back. Yes. Right, and you're still in the path of the punch when you go straight back. It's like being on the railroad train, or the railroad track. You gotta get off the track. All right, Vernon. All right, Vernon. See you later. Round number three underway for Devaro Williamson and Robert Wiggins. This is a scheduled ten rounder. Williamson, Teddy, made the cardinal mistake, something you talked about, about going straight back, and he gave Wiggins a couple of opportunities in that second round. See the numbers in the round and see Wiggins outlanding Williamson. Uh, in general, on principle, you never want to pull straight back. But it's more detrimental and more dangerous with certain opponents. And one of those opponents tonight is Wiggins. Because the kind of fighter he is, he needs to be set to punch. He's not real fast on his feet. <laughs> same way. If you go up on the angle, he's not going to get off. But if you go straight back, I mean that he's, if the punches are needs to be set, then he can be at his most effective best. He can fire at you. And that's exactly what he's doing right now with Williamson. You give him a little bit of an angle, he's going to have to adjust his feet because he needs to get set to punch. And he's really going to be kept ineffective. If you go straight back with a Robert Williams, and he's gained He's willing. He throws more punches to begin with. You're doing just what he wants you to do. See, his more punches can be effective when you get back. You give the room to land. But a counter right hand by Williamson staggered Williams, Wiggins, and he sends him down. Well, to catch 22, you throw wide punches at a guy who's going back, and they can be effective, but you can leave yourself open. And that's just what happened. Williamson was able to also catch Wiggins in between those wide shots. And that's the thing about Williamson. He can cover up for mistakes because he has power. 
But he's playing with some fire here as Wiggins pushes forward. That's why this fight is so interesting. What Wiggins does, and the only thing he can do is throw those wide punches. He has a chance to land when Williamson pulls back, but he gives Williamson at the same time a chance to do what he's doing now. Punch break, in between. Break. All right, you hold Williams. one more time, I'll take a point. You're holding him. Williamson sometimes a little sloppy technique-wise, but he's got that good right hand. Recognition is so important in a fight, in anything. And I think right now the recognition should be for Williamson to stay in the pocket. No, no, don't hit behind the only that. time he gets caught is when he pulls back. Stay in the pocket and take advantage of those wide shots by Wiggins. Stay in the eye of the storm right now. The body shot from Williamson. Watch Williamson when he's in close. He doesn't have any danger. You know, it's funny. You look at him and you say, well, you don't want him in close. The other guy's husky or the other guy's shorter. The other guy's stronger. But the other guy throws wide punches. He can only land when you step back. Key in round three, Robert Wiggins went down. Wiggins to the corner of DeMarro Williamson. Well, here you're going to see Wiggins has thrown those wide punches, and he had some effect when Williamson was pulling back. But then when Williamson punched in between those shots and kept his distance close, well, you could see the right hand scoring a knockdown. Here's another look at it. Wiggins throwing a lot of wide shots. When Williamson gives them room like that, they can be effective. But then when Williamson throws his hands in between those wide shots like he did right there with that right hand, he's going to land and he's going to score. The DeVarro Williamson fires the first salvo, dropping Wiggins in round number three. Very interesting fight here, bro. First of all, you've got explosive qualities and elements in there. Williamson can end the fight bang like that with the right hand. But with both guys' strengths, with both their weaknesses, the strength of Williamson is to use his height, use that jab, set up the right hand, keep distance. But when he keeps too much distance and he pulls back, he gives room to Williams to land. And then Williamson can throw that uppercut too when Wiggins goes into that pink and here comes Wiggins right back. Right. Makes for a head. really interesting Watch fight. Because the strength of Wiggins is just to win them, to let them go. And he can land and he can get caught. This is fun. Right, let him out. Step I back, still step, believe step. Williamson Stop. needs to pick one specific thing right here. And that's probably to stay in the pocket. Right there. He's not going to get caught when he's in the pocket, Bob. Wiggins needs room. He's one of those guys who needs room. He needs two things. He needs you right in front of him and he needs room to punch. Good shot scored by Wiggins. Right, to Wiggins is credit. He's adjusting, as you said, to that uppercut on the inside. But when he throws those wide shots, he leaves himself wide open. should do is use that jab, control the distance, catch Wiggins as he tries to get in, but don't pull straight back. He can step out if he's at the right distance, but don't pull straight back and allow Wiggins to walk in. Well, the one thing that kind of hurts Williams to tell you, you see that the shiny inside by Wiggins, very awkward with his jab, and almost his footwork and the way his body is. Off balance a lot, and he just has to win that right hand. Well, what's hurting him right I'm now is something you alluded to. Wiggins is smart back. enough to be adapting to an uppercut when Williamson tries to find Haven on the inside, inside those wide shots. Well, this is a shootout. Because he leaves his head in the middle. And we can 
Jones has already shown an ability to use that uppercut. Good round for Wiggins. That yeah, real good round for Robert Wiggins. Good action through the first four rounds. All right, Brian and Max spoke with Vernon Forrest, the welterweight champion earlier. Vernon joins us from Denver, Williamson's hometown. And Vernon, the assessment so far of Williamson and the problem he had in the last round. Well, I, I think, for one, he's too wide. He's throwing his, his hands are like this. For one, and two, he's pulling back. Like, like Teddy said before, you got to step around. If he's gonna, if you're gonna wait for the guy to come in, jab, touch him with the jab, make him run into the right hand. He doesn't have to. The guy's a softball. He doesn't have to fight him like a softball because he he doesn't do all the things that normal softball do. He's sitting down and he's he's throwing too much power when he's got he got to pick him, pick him, pick him. Then shoot pinpoint. He got to pinpoint his shots. Hook him into your right hand. Step around. Use that uppercut. Hook behind it. Step around. You hear me? Step over. See what he's doing. See what he's doing. Step around. You can fight. Box. Hear me? He don't have to try to knock the guy out. The guy, he's not going to knock the guy out anyway. But he don't have to, he don't have to take all the punishment he's taking to get the guy knocked out. All right, thanks, Vernon. Vernon's got his T.J. Duckett jersey on. Vernon from Augusta, Georgia. Obviously, his colors for the Atlanta Falcons who take on the Eagles in NFL playoff action tomorrow night. Carl Williamson needs to make like Michael Vick. Get a little bit more elusive because he's allowing Wiggins to just tee off on the inside. You know, there's a little bit more to Wiggins than meets the eye. He's a poor guy who looks cool, but he makes little adjustments. He fits in there. He's inside. He knows Wiggins is trying to hide inside from those wide shots. So what does he do? He throws the uppercut. And just a moment him ago, him Wiggins, who's known for leading the wide the punch punches, head, okay? he allowed Williamson to come in, and he timed him. And he has an even. I have Williamson ahead by a scant point. The only difference being that Wiggins went down in round three. Right now, the problem for Williamson is he's not sure which way to go about this fight. He's not exactly sure what his strategy should his strategy should be consistently. Teddy, in the last round, Williamson one for seven with the jab according to CompuBox. In the round before that, 0 for 14. He's not using that jab enough. That would speak to what I'm just talking about, that he's not sure exactly which way to go about this fight. He's not sure if he should box on the outside because when he boxed on the outside, he feels that he should be out there like that, picking his spots with the jab, which is what I think he should be doing. In spots, he's gotten caught, but he's gotten caught because he's pulled out straight back stop. instead of going over to the side. Back, back. So what oh, happens in his head, he says, okay, maybe I shouldn't box on the outside. So then he gets inside the pocket. When he gets inside the pocket, he's gotten caught with that uppercut when he's gotten close and laid there. So then he says, well, where do I go? Right now, he's caught in between. He's not sure which way to go about this fight. And he went straight back, and he got tagged again. And right now, he's caught in limbo, Williamson. He's not pulling the trigger on anything. I think right now, he's really mixed up. He's a little confused. Which way do I go about this fight? And he needs to grab onto one of those ideas and make it work. I think the first thing is reestablish or establish that jab. Good firm jab and throw it more than once. Let's go. I agree. Get a good hard jab to control distance. Not that kind of jab, which was a slow jab and allowed Wiggins to walk right in. This fight has become what Wiggins wanted. And one thing Williams did there, he tied up. He didn't allow room for that uppercut. The momentum flowing Wiggins' way. Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut, DeVarrell Williamson and Robert Wiggins, a couple of heavyweights. And Wiggins has grabbed the momentum of this fight, Teddy, as I look at the copy box numbers in the last three rounds. The taller Williamson has landed two of 36 jabs. And that's not real good, especially as you said, when you're the taller man. Step back, that's it. Hand the right through, hand the right off. That must be 
how Williamson is feeling right now. Stays outside and boxes, pulls back and gets caught. Tries to get in the pocket, gets caught with the other with the uppercut. He's a man right now that is in limbo. He is not sure exactly what it is that he should grab onto. There's a limp right hand by Williamson, and here comes Wiggins right back. See, there you can see what Williams is talking about. I'm not going to commit myself to anything. I'm going to allow Wiggins to help me. I think that's what he's looking to do right now. He's going to allow Wiggins to help him. He's waiting for the shorter man to come in, and he's going to look to land a good, clean, selected punch. Box. I think that's what Williamson is doing right now. He's going to be very selective with his punches. Try to keep the right distance. And try to catch the shorter Wiggins coming in. I think he's looking to get help from Wiggins right now. Let the shorter man leave it open and then try to nail him. Wiggins was down in round three from the right hand. Did two good rounds off that. Two real gentlemen outside the ring. That's what they are. What makes this fight so interesting is both guys' strengths play into the other's weaknesses. Playing into the other's weaknesses, the strength of Williamson with a good straight right hand. He can catch Wiggins in between punches, but then Wiggins' wide punches can catch Williamson when he bows out. Makes for a really intriguing fight. Robert Wiggins, Jim Keep Casey, on. the trainer. You're doing very well. You're tired? You should be breaking your second win now, sir. Okay? Okay, come here. Come here. Come here. Give me some water. I need some water back in the neck. I sound it back in the neck. Calm down. Calm down. Let's get that out of here, He should be breaking into that second win as we start round number seven. DeVero Williamson and Robert Wiggins in a real tight one. Wiggins was dropped in the third round. Bounced back nicely after that, controlling the next couple of rounds. Last round, round six, very close. getting very thoughtful here, and for good reason. Both of the things that they like to do leave doors wide open for the other guy. They don't want to leave those doors open. Wiggins likes to let those hands go. And that leaves himself open to the back of straight by his hands. One of which is already robbed him by Williamson. <laughs> Williamson likes to stay on the outside. He's looking to spot up that right hand. But when he pulls back, he gets forced back. That leaves him open for those wide shots. So both guys are trying to be contained about what they do. You can see. They're trying to make sure whatever they do, they do it only at the right time and only in the right amounts. Round number seven. Well, guys, what they're trying to do, Bob, is they're trying to be much more specific with what they do. And 
take away some of that room of error. That's why they're doing less. They have both shaken off the other one. So they both gain each other's respect. Phillips is trying to chop that right hand down. Puts his punches together there. Back. If he doesn't be careful, he'll go straight down. And he must be careful he doesn't get greedy. He did real good scoring there, but he stayed one punch too long. And with a game guy like Wiggins, he'll pay for that. And you can see what Williams is thinking now. Okay, I'll land one punch, then I'll tie Wiggins up. And not allow Wiggins to answer back. Left hand from Wiggins. Tight round. And there's the bell to end round number seven. Well, yes, and not against the guy that was a great guy, but against the guy who's a game guy, a guy who probably was an easy mark, no doubt about it, but there was a reason for it. Six months of inactivity, and the last fight that Mariki was in, he was on the floor three times. And he had hand surgery. So I wanted to bring him back with a guy that he could kind of get his feet wet again. Well, he did. That's the second time he's beaten him in less than a year. So Mariki gets the win against Mike Coker. We can make a case for him. I'd have to stop being licensed. No, I would not that lot. I'd be the first one to admit that. All right, round eight underway for Devon Williamson and Robert Wiggins. They take turns hurting each other. Over the power punches in this fight. Now look how close it is. That's one. Great. Williamson, who I was talking about earlier, a couple of rounds is in the and looking for what he needed to do. He's found what he needs to do. He's picking that up a couple to short around pretty good. He's standing his ground and he's getting his punches off before Wiggins can get anything going. And for the second time in the fight, Wiggins goes down. He was down in round number three. He's Six, down again. Seven. Hey, come here, walk to me. Come here. You want to keep going? Let's go. Get him up. Mike Ortega says you want to keep going. Right hand there from DeVar Williamson. Goes back to that uppercut. Picking that uppercut. Because you can see, Williams, a shorter man, goes into that turtle defense. He leans forward a little bit. Leaves himself vulnerable to that punch coming from downstairs. Now watch what Williamson is doing. He's just standing his ground right now. He's not pulling back, and he's making sure that he's just keeping Wiggins, the very game Wiggins, defensive. Not giving him himself a chance to catch him going out. Good round number eight for Javal Williamson. Wiggins is so gay. He is still going to win that to his work with that right hand. And right behind him here in the temple area. See that turtle defense? That, right now, that turtle defense is being made super. That turtle defense is working because when he crosses his arm, you can see Williamson's doing a lot of work. Now Williamson. Look, look at the arms crossed. He can't work when his arms are crossed, Bob. And Williamson is taking advantage of it. He knows he can't work when his arms are crossed because he has to uncross them to punch. Williamson is a small man here. He stepped up close and he took advantage of that. Let him go. Wiggins dropped here in round number eight. Mike Ortega calling a timeout. One point, hold it. He's giving Wiggins a point for holding, but as we talked about last week, when you're hurt, you want to hold. Let's go. Now that he's holding the stack, the action of the fight, he's hurt. He's trying to come up and hold and stop the offensive with Williamson. Watch Williamson read the field, so to speak. When he sees that Wiggins' hands are in conventional position, he's more careful. When he crosses them, he lets them go. Good round for Williamson. Here's Brian Kenny with news on Costa Zoo. Bottom right hand corner, you're gonna see the damage done by that right hand of Williamson right there. Nice straight right hand landed, and then you see the turtle defense of Wiggins, and Williamson moves those hands. 
Teddy, round number eight, a huge round in this fight. One, because Wiggins went down. And two, because referee Mike Ortega took a point away from Wiggins for holding. So, at my scorecard, I have a 10-7 round for Williamson in a pretty close fight. That's a huge swing. And there are the numbers from round number eight, a round in which Wiggins went down. That landed 40-8. Tremendous swing, as you said. At a late point in the fight, hard to overcome. There's not a problem with that holding. And when a guy's getting pounded, and he's been knocked down, and he's getting pounded pretty good, you want to tie your guy up, you want to hold, you want to stop the punishment. It's not as if you're just stalling and holding and making it a harder fight. You're using it as a defense mechanism. Teddy scorecard through eight, 76, 74 for Williamson. I have it 77, 72 for Williamson. In the last three rounds. And of course, a three point edge in the last round. Of course, Wiggins has been hurt the last round. But he's also a little bit careful, a little tentative now because his best punches are those long punches. He got to make sure he's in the right position. He doesn't want to throw them and leave himself open for the best punch of Williamson. The straight right hand is something to just keep in the back of your head. This is the first time Williamson's passed five rounds. And Wiggins does have some late power. Remember, just a little over a year ago, he stopped Eric Kirkland in the 10th round. But you said Wiggins had been 10 rounds in that fight. Been 10 rounds one time. Mike, let him out. Let's go. This is all Let's uncharted hold territory hold for Williamson. to a pace where Williamson doesn't have to face. Side, okay? okay, let's go. About being in the last late rounds for the first time. Doesn't have to worry about it. You can see what Wiggins is trying to do. He knows his best shot is to land one of those long punches. And he needs a certain landscape to do that. So he's trying to step forward. Force Williamson out of the pocket. Force Williamson to back up where he can create an opportunity to land one of those punches. And you can see what Williamson is doing. Trying to pick his spots, not waste anything. One more round to go in a very intriguing heavyweight battle. Time. Other corner. Went to the wrong corner. Everything's here. Eric Kirkland. Eric Kirkland all over again, buddy. Come on. These are the tips that we showed yeah. early in the fight at the beginning. Go no wide punches coming in. Well, Wiggins right? has thrown plenty of them. He's paid for it. He's been on the floor because of it. Once inside, go to work. He could do a little more of that, but early on, he did good with the uppercut and put the punch where he's going to be. He scored well when he's punched behind Williamson. Be right. You hear me? Be right. Let's go. Williamson, uh, stay on the stool, land the, the right oh, and say good night. Well, he landed the right and he scored a knockdown, but it's not good night yet. Use your height. He tried to do that, but he hasn't always been successful. Make super the turtle. He's done that in spots, but he still has a game Wiggins in front of him. Tenth and final round underway for Devaro Williamson and Robert Wiggins. Wiggins is going to need a knockout to win. He was down twice in this fight, and he had a point deducted in round eight, the round in which he went down, and he had a point deducted for holding. Wiggins has been cut. There's two reasons for it. One, his game is. Let's go. Come on. And two. Williamson has played it very safe the last round after that real big eighth round. He's allowed Wiggins to get himself together. But Wiggins has to make the most of that opportunity. He's going to take big chances now. That's his style anyway. But he's really... He's got to live or die by the sword. His sword is out. Those long wide, wide punches. Those long looping punches. 
where that can do one of two things. It can end the night suddenly for him in a way that he gets caught in between one of those wide shots as Williamson sits there in the pocket trying to catch him as he comes in. Or he can do what he did earlier. Force Williamson back and turn his fight around. Precious seconds tipping away for Robert Wiggins. Williamson keeping this round to the outside. I give credit to both guys, and I give credit to Williamson. He had a little spot there where he wasn't sure what to do, and he made a decision what to do. He found what he felt he needed to find. A definite game plan. He wasn't sure. He's standing his ground. He's allowing, see what he's doing? He's allowing Wiggins to make a little move, and then he's beat him before he can do anything. He's using his height in a way where he's just beating Wiggins to the moment. He's allowing Wiggins to help him. As Wiggins starts to come in, he looks to nail him. Watch your head, come in here. I'll tell you another thing, Bob. Williamson is being very conscious of his distance. He's trying not to step back two steps in a row. If he steps back, it's one step, and then he, that's it, he punches right there. He's not going to go back two, three in a row no more. He learned a lesson. Look, he's just holding his, holding the line there. If Wiggins makes a move, he'll punch. From South Ozone Park, Queens, Devaro Williamson, longtime amateur, 34 years of age, trying to hand his 18th win on his resume. He has 16 knockouts. He had 12 straight knockout wins coming into this fight. And we are set with the judges' scorecards. We send it up to our ring announcer, Pedro Fernandez. After 10 rounds of boxing, we go to the Miller Live scorecards. Judge Fred Yuchi scores about 94-93. Judge George Smith scores about 97-90. And Judge Steve Epstein George scores about 96-91 for the winner. By unanimous decision, Devereal, touch of sleep, Williamson. Devereal Williamson, a unanimous decision It'll victory. Give a round of applause for The judge kind of had it as I did. Good hard fight and a good lesson for Devereal Williamson. Right. As it was, both these guys did themselves proud, showed a lot of character, a lot of heart.